Hi everybody. This is a video for our park school managers. These are some final tips. We'll also share a link to the slides with you. There are a few links in the slides that may help you uh, come testing time. We know we've sent out a lot of information over the last few days in writing and it's a lot to take in. So the purpose of this video is to kind of eliminate some of that for you or at least give you a focus of what you need for the actual assessments. So I'm sharing this video on behalf of Janelle and Ursula and myself and uh, we really appreciate everything you've done to get us to this point. First of all, we do want to remind everybody that while we're undertaking testing, starting now, we have our belief statements, our belief statements that we're preparing all students to be successful throughout their lives, that learning should be focused on large, significant concepts and skills and that are applied in a variety of real life settings and that student success is measured through academic as well as social and emotional growth through a variety of assessments rather than a single test score. We need to continue as leaders, as park school managers within our buildings to stress these belief statements so that people can continue to focus on the majority of their time with our students, which is still spent learning and not testing right now, and using that time to the maximum um, to help us um, implement our PLC areas of focus in an effort to ensure that our students are learning as much as possible. Thank you for your leadership with these belief statements. Now, we do want to remind everybody that at this point, we are no longer using the training site for right now. There's a chance that after spring break, we'll dive back into it uh, as we prepare for the EOI test. But for right now, no more work being done in the training site. Rather, all of our work as we've been doing the last few weeks should be in the blue live site. Obviously, everything we do here is real and is live and will affect student experiences. So if you have a question, just stop before you do it and reach out to us. Now the link for the live site is pictured down there below, il.pearsonaccessnext.com. If you don't already have it memorized or bookmarked, um, you'll obviously need that because you'll be in that site every single day for the next few weeks. And then again, uh, really for the remainder of most of the school year as we prepare then for EOI and implement the EOI assessments. So our objectives for this video are, first of all, to help separate out the things that the information services team is doing, as well as give you a few chronological tips that will help you in implementing testing each day in your building, kind of what you need to be doing and in what order for that to be successful. This video is in no way meant to be comprehensive. Rather, we have our um, teacher overview document. We obviously have our modified CCSD 21 Park School Test, Admi or Test Administrator Manual, excuse me, and then we have supplemented both of those with our makeup processes that were sent out to school staffs, and hopefully all of our kids will be present for every single testing unit, and we won't have to do any makeups, um, so we'll just cross our fingers about that. So first of all, what's the information services team doing? Um, there are a number of things that we're taking care of, not only up until this point, but all the way through the process. So we wanted to highlight some of those things for you right here. Um, first of all, we've already cached, uh, pre-cached all the tests for this first week of testing. Um, we will update those caches as we need to do so. Uh, and you can see this is a picture of one of our um, Proctor Cache servers, and we have the green lights showing OK throughout the Proctor Cache servers for each test session. So each test session has its own cache, uh, and that's really important. Uh, so at this point, we should be set for the week. We plan to do those one week at a time and just to update sessions as necessary. So we'll be taking care of those things as we move through the process. There's no reason for any Park School manager to click on the cache or update cache buttons that you'll see in the students in session uh, page for each session. Additionally, and we know we've caused some confusion about this because we showed you what starting a test looked like during the infrastructure trials, but we're starting the tests on the information services team. Um, there's no reason for our park school managers to do this. We will blanket start all the tests for the day each day early in the morning. 
Um, and then because of the makeup process solution we went with, there were two options for makeup processes. And because we're leaving the students in their session, we will not be stopping the sessions until all of the students have completed testing at the end of, um, of PARC. And so that could be, could be as early as this week um, for our eighth graders and fifth graders in math, if everybody or nearly everybody is in attendance. But for many of these, it'll, it'll likely be right after spring break when we're, done, when we're done with makeups and done with testing. So again, stopping sessions, that's something that the information services team is doing to help us with that. And we'll remind you this as we move through. We are going to ask that you call us and let us know to confirm. We'll be keeping track that, that your sessions uh, for a grade level are complete, and then we'll go ahead and stop those, ses those sessions. The other thing we're doing is we're providing support. Now, a lot of our neighbors who have done all electronic testing or mostly electronic testing are much smaller school districts, and they've been able to have staff members from their technology staff, like our information services team, in the building or buildings when testing was going on. Being a much larger district with 12 schools, we don't have enough staff members to do that. So there's a chance that if something happens, one of us will hop in a car and, and go there, but mostly we'll be doing this support from the tech center. And uh, that limits what we can do, but we can remote in not to the students' actual devices, but to like the Proctor Cash server and, and check on some other things. So we will be providing that support as we go through testing. Let's talk about what's happening in the buildings with our students and teachers and all of you now. So first of all, this, this second objective of this video is to go through what your workflow might be and what kinds of things you'll need to um, be doing on a daily basis, multiple times each day in some cases, um, to help testing go smoothly in the building. We know this is going to be very disruptive most likely to what you, you're typically doing, um, but unfortunately that's the reality and we appreciate everybody's efforts towards our areas of focus all year long and, and hopefully we'll find that this will go really smoothly and we won't have to suspend those efforts, um, but in the event we need to, uh, we'll have to give PARC the time it needs this year so that we can be as successful as possible with the implementation and of course we will be very clear um, if there are implementation issues about communicating those with both ISBE and with Pearson um, to try and help ourselves and everybody else in the future. So one thing that you need to do twice a day each day, um, once you have multiple grade levels testing uh, within a single day, is you'll have to set up your session list. So you'll have to go into sessions and find those sessions that are testing in that morning or that afternoon check them and then go to students and sessions so you you have them available in this box pictured here with the red um, markings around it so you can quickly click on the session and then in the bottom part of the page go to the students within that session so you'll want to identify those sessions and then click over to students and sessions and this is where you'll need to be ready to go at 9 a.m. and in the elementary schools at 1 p.m. Um, in the middle schools, obviously, those times vary depending on what AM and PM means for a given grade level in a particular day. Another thing that's really important for our park school managers is, is some critical reminders. Obviously, our teachers have gotten a lot of information recently. Hopefully, they've read it all. Again, one of the things we've heard from other school districts is that teachers who prepared not the students by taking them through like worksheet style park and more park, but, but rather by reading and preparing for what the test was going to be like for themselves as a test administrator. In those classrooms, things have been fairly smooth, particularly with Chromebooks. Um, so some of the key reminders, again, we've given teachers a lot to read too, that we want you putting out there for teachers on essentially a daily basis is number one, before testing, the kids should always be restarting their Chromebooks. That will help if Pearson updates the TestNav app, that'll help push that most up-to-date app onto the device. Um, number two, it'll just kind of clean things out as a restart always does on any kind of computing platform. Another thing the students need to do is before they click in the lower left corner on the apps button and select test nav, they should check the volume and they should 
um, set the volume. It doesn't have to go all the way up, but it should probably be about two thirds of the way up or three fourths of the way up. And they need to do that before they're in test nav. The third thing that's really important that we're reminding teachers about, and again, this has been a major issue in other places and a very difficult one for us to fix on the backside. It requires intervention from ISBE and Pearson. Um, is the teachers, number one, should not be giving the kids the seal code sheet. That sheet is teachers. But number two, they need to be making sure that they're using the right seal codes for the right session. First of all, so they have to check the session name and make sure they're using math for math and ELA for ELA, for example. But the other thing is they have to give the students the seal code for the unit, that particular unit, and only that particular unit. Um, if they give the kids the seal code for the wrong unit, it just won't work, and that'll create some chaos in the classroom. But if they give the kids the seal code for the next unit, in addition to this unit, the kids can just go on, and that causes us all kinds of problems. So we can avoid that by making sure they're using the right um, session seal code sheet. They should be in the right places in the folders. We appreciate all the work you've done checking our work on that, and that they only give the students the seal code for that unit that they're doing at that time, and that they give it to them correctly then. Couple other reminders for you to be sharing with teachers on a daily basis. Test security. Um, they can use their computers for hangouts to help us solve a technical issue. That's it. No cell phones out. That's very clear. Um, no computers out. Um, those things are are critical um, and they're they're very clear in the park test administration manual so we need to to stay true to those test security rules that we have to live by um, and then we have the makeups form and if teachers can be filling out that form um, right immediately after the session that will help you plan within the building and and that will help us support you as as we see those uh, Google Sheets fill up hopefully not fill up, but with kids who've been absent from testing. So a couple of tasks that you may need to do that you very likely will need to do that are more technical. And this is why you'll need to have Pearson Access Next up. Now, obviously, in Pearson Access Next, one of the cool things you can do is just simply be monitoring student progress in the tests. Um, but the other thing is you, you will need to, from time to time, for a variety of different reasons, resume a student's test. And to do that, um, you'll go to the actual session. So here I'm in the fifth grade math session at Field. And you can see we have the student name blanked out at the bottom of the screen. Um, but you'll check this. You'll find the student you're looking for who you need to resume. If there's multiple students you need to resume, you can check all of them at one time. All the, just the students you need to resume, not all of the students. You could do that too. but. We don't want to. So you can check the student's name once you've found them. And then again, remember that whole, you're very good at it now, bouncing around Pearson Access Next to navigate. Then you have to go back up to the top to the Select Tasks menu. From the Select Tasks menu, you choose Resume Student Tests, click the Start button. So that's how you resume student tests um, when that pops up. And it will essentially tell you when you need to resume the student test. If it doesn't, you may be on a support call with us. Um, we will, rather than resuming the student test for you, we'll walk you through that so you can be proficient with it and can do those on your own as needed. In addition to resuming student tests, oh, I made, I'm sorry, I forgot, I tried to help. Go down to the bottom, check the student's name, and then check resume student tests. Apologize about that. In addition to resuming student tests, if you have a student who's absent on Monday for the Unit 1 test, but they show up for Unit 2 test, you'll need to set the section start for that student differently. Um, and you can do that this, very similarly to resuming their tests. Um, you'll have to go find the student within the session. So you'll go to Students and Sessions for that session. Find the student, check the box next to the student's name, as you can see down below. And again, the student state ID and name has all been blanked out for purposes of this, um, but you would check the box there. And then you'll have to, again, bounce back up to the Select Tasks list, uh, or the pull-down menu. And in there, you'll choose Set Section Start. And then that'll take you through the rest of getting that student into the right session. Um, and then you will be able to make up the out-of-order session later on with that student. 
So those are two key key things um, for resuming students and then for getting makeup students back on track with the rest of their class. Now, when you get called to a teacher's classroom and support is needed, it's typically going to be one of two things. You're either going to have to resume a student or something's going on with their computer. In the event that something's going on with their Chromebook, the best thing you can do, even if the teacher has already done it, is restart that machine. Now, you've got a few extra machines. It may be a good idea for each park school manager to carry an extra Chromebook with her or him. So you have that machine. You can just drop it right in. Um, then you bring the other machine down and, and restart it and plug it in and see if we can get that working again. Call us once, you're, once all the students are testing and see if we can talk through what might be going on with that. Um, but a restart, even if the teacher's already done it, um, maybe a restart and letting it sit for a few moments, uh, two or three minutes even we've heard from other districts, is helping stuff appear correctly. And sometimes when goofy stuff goes on in TestNav, the best thing you can do is restart the computer, go into Pearson Access next, you'll have to resume the student at that point, and then have the student log back into TestNav on that computer and see if it's working better. Obviously, call us if you need help. There is a link right here to the support process document. You may want to open that in the tab and have that handy. Um, there may not be a ton we can do from here, but we will be able to do some monitoring, check some things out, and um, kind of figure out what's going on with you uh, to try and see if we can put some solutions in place and keep, keep students testing so that we can move back on to learning. If you have questions about anything, please check in first. If there are questions about um, something technical, follow the support process, give a call to the tech center. Um, if there are questions about a, um, some kind of management issue, please reach out to Ursula, Janelle, and me. Once we move into testing, um, an email followed by a hangout is probably the best way to try and get a hold of us, given the range of things we'll be dealing with if it's not a peer support issue. Finally, I know Janelle said this at the end of the last video on behalf of everybody here, but we want to thank you again. You have helped our teachers maintain our focus on student learning and in delivering a very balanced message and your work has hopefully contributed to more learning for our students um, so they weren't being distracted by these tests. Your work also will help these tests be implemented as smoothly as possible. So there's as little test related stress for everyone involved as possible. And we can devote our energies again to, to student learning and not being stressed out um, about the testing process. So thank you very much for all of your work. We appreciate it greatly. Um, we wish everyone the best of luck with the implementation, but no matter how it ends up going, um, we want to thank you. I'm confident it'll go fairly well, um, not without minor issues here or there, but everybody's done a great job and it should be fairly smooth. Thanks again.